Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast, Lesson 6-1, Variables and Expressions. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and we are starting algebra. So our learning goal for today is to translate words into algebraic expressions. This seems hard, but I think if you just put a little bit of thought into it, you will have a great time doing it. Here are our learning goals today. We want to recognize vocabulary that tells you to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. There's real key terms that we're looking for. We're also going to use variables to represent unknown numbers. And that's Bryson and Braden. Bryson is Superman every year. So that's they're in their Halloween costumes there. Our vocabulary for today, the first one, you haven't done these in a while is algebraic expression. That's a mathematical phrase, just like an English phrase, but it's in math, that has a variable, a number, and an operation. A variable is a letter or symbol that represents an unknown amount that can vary or change. We know what a number is. That's like one, two, three, four, or five, or any number. And an operation is add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Our first example, we're going to do two different ones because algebraic expressions can be very different if they are using different operations. So we're going to do both A and B. A is twice the number of people. We're going to represent that using an expression. And B is $7 less than the current price. One thing I want to make sure you understand is that an expression doesn't have an equal sign because we're not solving it. We're just representing what the problem is using numbers and symbols and operations. So let's go ahead and solve that example right there. So when we're talking about twice the number of people, we use the term twice to mean two times. So that kind of tells us right there when we hear two times, that tells us we're going to use the operation of multiplication. So people, and we have two times the number of people. So I'm gonna use a P just to represent that people. The letter that we choose, the variable, which is generally a letter as you get older, sometimes you've seen it as question marks or empty boxes, just squares like this. And you had to fill in the number that fit in the square or a question mark where you had to fill in the number that went in that spot. But we use letters in fifth grade. So we're gonna use the um, letter P as our variable because we don't know how many people there are. So we're gonna say twice means two times P, or we can write this two P, just like that. Now, when we write a number right next to a letter, that always tells us to multiply, so you kinda of wanna memorize that right now. Two times P is the same thing as two right next to a P. I want you to notice something else. Anytime I write a letter as a variable, I'm always going to use lowercase letters because uppercase, uppercase letters, capital letters, usually are used in formula work and we're not doing formula work right now. We're just using them as variables to represent an unknown number as in the unknown number of people here. So two times P or two P. When we look at the number seven less than, seven dollars less than the current price, we, in any word problem, would use less than as a minus symbol because you're saying something is less than something else and you want to find out the difference. We want to know, first of all, are we talking about the $7 is less than the current price or is the current price less than $7? In this case, the current price is the larger amount and the less than, the $7, is actually the less than number. So in subtraction, the bigger number needs to come first in fifth grade. So we're gonna use a P for price, in this case, the same variable or letter as we did before, but instead of representing people as we did up here, we're gonna represent price. So P minus, well, let's not use that. Oops. P minus seven. I know you're gonna make me do push-ups for that mistake since I wrote the dollar sign. And then in an expression, we don't necessarily use the dollar sign because we just have the variable, the operation, and the number. So P minus seven will be whatever the price was before or after. So as we do our practice problems, remember that we're gonna be using vocabulary from previous lessons. Words like quotient, which means the answer to a division problem, or product, which is the answer to a multiplication problem. Less than, 
more than. More than would mean to add, less than would mean to subtract. So in our first practice problem, we're going to subtract a number from 10. Go ahead and try and write that expression out using a variable, the number, and an operation symbol. And then push play when you're ready. Did you write 10 minus n? The 10 comes first because we were subtracting a number from 10. So you should have written 10 minus n, that's the number. We don't know what that number is. We are just representing, representing it using a variable. Let's do another one. The product of nine and a number. Go ahead and push play when you're ready. Did you write nine times n or nine n? Remember, if nine is right next to the letter n, it means to multiply those two together. That would be the correct way to write an expression for the words, the product of nine and a number. Product means to multiply. Let's go ahead and do some more. Add six to a number. Let's see what you get here. Push play when you're ready. Did you write six plus n? Six is the number we're looking at. Add means we're gonna use an addition symbol and number we're representing by n. We could actually use any letter to represent the word number, that unknown number. We could use an X, a Y, an A, a B, any number at all. But a lot of times we use N to stand for a number that we don't know what it is. Here's a practice word problem. Mrs. Gooding is 13 inches taller than Bryson. Bryson's the short little blonde kid there. Write an algebraic expression to show this situation. Push play when you're ready. Did you write B plus 13? We want to know how tall Mrs. Gooding is. So we know Bryson's height in inches, or we don't really, but if we knew it, it's represented by N, by B. And then 13 is how many inches Mrs. Gooding is taller than Bryson. Taller is more than, so we would want to add. It's time to challenge yourself. Mr. Gooding spends time each evening making flip videos for Mrs. Gooding's class on the computer. The number of minutes he spends can be represented by the variable V for videos. Write an algebraic expression to represent the time Mr. Gooding will spend designing flip videos on his computer in nine weeks. Remember, there are seven days in one week. Show all of your work in your flip journal and come to school tomorrow ready to check your answer. See if you can also catch my grammar era, error. Error. Good grief. Error. Finishing up. These are some of our kids too. There's Faith and Juma. Review your learning goals. Have you mastered them? Do you understand what we're doing? We went through this lesson kind of quickly because there's not a lot of computation involved. When you're writing expressions, you're not solving them, so you don't have to do any adding or subtracting. Write down if you're at a one, a two, or a three in your learning. And then in your flip journal, write down any questions that you still have. Woohoo, for algebra, you finished lesson 6-1, variables and expressions. We can't wait to see you tomorrow.